Hello, everyone. In this video, we start discussing Chapter 17, Does Debt Policy Matter? A firm's basic resource is the stream of cash flows produced by its assets. When the firm is financed entirely by common stock, all those cash flows belong to the stockholders. When it issues both debt and equity securities, it splits the cash flows into two streams, a relatively safe stream that goes to the debt holders and a riskier stream that goes to the stockholders. The firm's mix of debt and equity financing is called the capital structure. And of course, capital structure is not just debt versus equity. There are many different flavors of debt, at least two flavors of equity, such as common and preferred, plus hybrids such as convertible bonds. The firm can issue dozens of distinct securities in countless combinations, and it attempts to find the particular combination that maximizes the overall market value of firm. So that's basically the capital structure decision. So capital structure decision uh, essentially involves finding out a mixture of debt and equity that maximizes share price in the market. However, uh, an obvious question is, are all these matters, I mean, finding out an optimum capital structure. Modigliani and Miller, who showed that payout policy doesn't matter in the perfect capital markets in the last chapter, also showed that financing decisions doesn't matter in perfect markets. Their proposition one states that a firm cannot change the total value of its securities just by splitting its cash flows into different streams. The firm's value is determined by its real assets, not by the securities it issue. Thus, capital structure is irrelevant as long as the firm's investment decisions are taken as given. So MM's Proposition 1 allows complete separation of investment and financing decisions. It implies that any firm could use the capital budgeting process presented in Chapter 5 uh, through 12 without worrying about where the money for capital expenditure comes from. In those chapters, we assumed all equity financing without really thinking about it. If MM are right, that is exactly the right approach that we have done so far. If the firm uses a mixture of debt and equity financing, its overall cost of capital will be exactly the same as the cost of equity with all equity financing. We believe that in practice, capital structure does matter. But we nevertheless devote all of these chapters to MM's argument. If we don't fully understand the conditions under which MM's theory holds, we won't fully understand why one capital structure is better than another. The financial manager needs to know what kinds of market imperfections to look for. So based on this discussion, we will essentially talk about MM's proposition one and two, and also the assumption under which those propositions are derived. And also we will understand what an average cost of capital and the effect of leverage on firms value, cost of debt, cost of equity, and the overall cost of capital. So Modigliani and Miller argued that in a world where there are no taxes, and no market frictions, it doesn't matter whether company borrows or company uses its equity, okay? So the market value of the firm is unaffected by the mixture of debt and equity. And even proposition is uh, derived based on this assumption. For example, there are no taxes, no bankruptcy costs, and no effect on management incentives. So let us enter into Modigliani and Miller world. Let us accept that financial manager would like to find the combination of securities that maximizes the value of the firm. How is this done? MM's answer is that the financial manager should stop worrying. In a perfect market, any combination of securities is as good as another. The value of the firm is unaffected by its choice of capital structure. You can see this by imagining two firms that generate the same stream of operating income differ only in the capital structure. Firm that is indicated by U, 
which is unlevered form. So the total value of the equity is equity of an unlevered form is the same as the total value of the form, which is the value of the unlevered form. Okay. Now form L, form L on the other hand is levered. The value of its stock is therefore equal to the value of the firm less the value of the debt. So the value of the levered firm's equity will be basically the value of the firm and minus value of debt. Okay. Now think which of these firms would you prefer to invest in? If you don't want to take much risk, you can buy a common stock of the unlevered firm, you. For example, if you buy 1% of the unlevered firm shares, your investment is 0 0.01 and value of the unlevered firm. So you are 1% owner of the unlevered firm and this is the value of your investment. Okay, so you are entitled to 1% of the profits of the firm. Now compare this with an alternative strategy. This is to purchase the same fraction of both the debt and equity of a levered firm. So in this case, you buy 1% of the debt of the levered firm and 1% equity of the levered firm. So this is the value of your investment in debt and equity. Okay. Now you understand that since you are 1% owner of the debt, you get 1% of the total interest. And since you are the 1% owner of the equity, you get 1% of the profit minus interest. So the total of 1% into debt plus equity and 1% of the profit. So debt and equity, value of debt and value of equity is basically the value of the firm, which is 1%. And you can see that 1% of the value of the levered firm will have a payoff of 1% of the profit and 1% of the value of the unlevered firm will have 1% of the profit. Since both the investment has the same payoff, uh, according to law of one price, both the investment will have the same value, okay? Now, suppose that you are willing to run a little more risk. You decide to buy 1% of the outstanding shares in the levered form. So your investment and return is as follows. Now, what you have is 1% uh, equity of the levered form. So you have 1% of the profit minus interest and 1% of the value of levered form minus the debt of levered form. Okay, but there is an alternative strategy. What is that? This is to borrow 1% of the debt of the levered firm of your own account and purchase 1% of the stock of the unlevered firm. Okay, so in this case, what you do, you borrow and then you of the levered firm and then invest in the unlevered firm. Okay, in this case, your borrowing gives you an immediate cash inflow and but you have to pay an interest on that uh, as well. You have to pay an interest here. And your uh, total investment and returns are as follows. You can see 1% of the value of the unlevered firm and uh, the value of the debt of the levered firm and 1% of the profit minus interest. So in both cases, you have the same payoff. And since you have the same payoff, once again, the value of the investment will be the same. 